Is it wrong to defend yourself? Hi, welcome to today's little lesson. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to address a question that uh, well, it's actually something that came up in my own life not too long ago. Uh, I was defending myself and uh, a person before whom I was defending myself uh, didn't like it uh, for some reason or another and they said, well, Jesus never defended himself. And I thought to myself, well, that's not really true. Uh, we know that at Jesus's trial, he was silent as a lamb before its shears is silent. He was fulfilling prophecy. Obviously, there was no need to defend himself. Um, it was God's will for him to die an unjust death on the cross because he was dying for our sins. And so from that perspective, um, he was actually guilty. I know that sounds strange to say. He was guilty with our guilt. And so there was no defense. And it is thought by some that that may have been why Jesus was silent and didn't defend himself. Because as our representative, he had no defense. But there were other times in Jesus's ministry where he definitely defended himself. I mean, you read so many of the conversations he had with the religious leaders and could definitely be characterized as defending himself, right? Sure. Uh, one time they said, you know, he casts out demons by the prince of demons. And did Jesus, you know, just remain silent when he heard that accusation? No, he, he defended himself. He said, you know, that's not true at all. A house divided against itself will, will not stand. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming among you. So, so there. So Jesus defended himself. So I guess it must be okay to defend yourself. And I, I think if you think about it, uh, defending yourself could be, at times, again, as long, as long as you're defending yourself honestly and truthfully, and that you are, in fact, innocent of what you're being accused of, uh, it, it could be considered an act of love towards uh, even your accusers, because they should know and believe the truth. If you love your enemies, you don't want them to believe what's not true about you, right? And if you love your friends, you're not going to want them to believe what's not true about you. It's pretty hard to do anything for God and not be criticized and not be attacked on some level or another. I know that from experience. So if you're going to step out and try to obey Jesus, you know, you're, you're going to be persecuted and that persecution sometimes come in you know, the form of accusations. And uh, when, you, when you defend yourself, um, you know, it, you're showing your love for, for your accuser. You're mistaken. That's, that's not true. I want you to have your sins forgiven. I want you to be born again. I want you to go to heaven. I want you to miss hell. So I don't want you to believe a lie about me, right? Sure, sure. Well, uh, the trouble is, you know, sometimes when you defend yourself, people who are, you know, in darkness often make the presumption, the assumption that, oh, you must be guilty because you're defending yourself. Because if you didn't defend yourself, uh, that would show that you don't even care. Well, see, they're, they're operating on a, in worldly wisdom there. People, people, you know, who love care about what other people think about them because their reputation is important because their reputation is what they use to honor Christ and to you know let their light shine and so forth. You know, there's a line in uh, Shakespeare's play Hamlet. It's quite famous. Um, the lady doth protest too much, methinks. <laughs> And uh, I forget the story behind it, but I heard the line, you know, but, but it's based upon what I was just talking about. You know, when someone's really adamant about defending themselves, sometimes then we conclude, well, you know, you're so dramatic and you're, you're, you're so passionate about this, you, you, you must be guilty, you know, because otherwise you just maybe remain calm or, or you wouldn't even worry about it. Well, it is definitely uh, something to deal with, and it, it's, it's counterintuitive. You know, sometimes when you defend yourself, people who aren't used to, you know, acting like a Christian and always speaking the truth, 
well, the, you know, they're they're in uh, operating on a you know a worldly principle. Well, if you if you weren't guilty, you wouldn't be defending yourself. What? I mean, in court cases, guilty people don't defend themselves. I mean, they hire attorneys to help defend them and so forth. Otherwise, they could be punished for something that they a crime they didn't commit. You know, so it's really silly logic. So I think the important thing is if you have to defend yourself, you know, do it in love, and. Uh, do it. Make sure your motive is, you, you know, even you know more important than any selfish motive. That just that I care about my accusers. I care about those who might hear the evil report of my accusers, and I want them to know the truth. The Apostle Paul defended himself. There's uh, two whole chapters in the New Testament. There's nothing else but basically defense. First, uh, excuse me, Second Corinthians, chapters 11 and 12. There's a problem in Corinth. These false. Apostles had wiggled their way in there, wormed their way into the church, and won the loyalties of uh, many of the Corinthian Christians. And they were bad mouthing Paul and, uh, you know, diminishing his importance and so forth. And so Paul goes into this lengthy defense. You can tell he's very uncomfortable about it because he has to boast. He doesn't like talking about all of his credentials and his the signs and wonders that he God performed through him that prove that proved that he was an apostle. You can read it for yourself, um, but, but he keeps apologizing for, for, for his boasting. This is the chapters where he talks about that thorn in the flesh that was given to him, you know, to keep him from exalting himself because of the abundance of his uh, supernatural revelation that he had. Well, he had amazing revelation. God, it's all written down for us there in the, in the New Testament epistles that he wrote. Some of the things he heard, he wasn't even able to repeat. The things that he learned and knew. He said it's not lawful for a man to speak these things. So he, he had revelation he had kept totally quiet about. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Okay. At the very end of his long defense, he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 19. Now listen to this. This is really interesting. All this time, you have been thinking that we are defending ourselves to you. Well, yeah, if you read it, you, you, you'd think that. But look, he's going to give some insight here. Actually, it is in the sight of God that we've been speaking in Christ and all for your upbuilding, beloved. So what he's saying is, I, I have an anointing, an unction, an, uh, you know, from the Holy Spirit who's speaking through me. You know, I'm speaking in Christ. This is like prophetic. And you thought I'm just going through like a carnal uh, practice here uh, 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 of defending myself. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm being led by the Holy Spirit right now to say these things, and it's for your benefit because you need my ministry. And if you don't, if, if you're turning your back on me and and uh, giving your loyalty to these bad guys, well, that's not good for you. So I love you. So I've got to defend myself because I love you. You got it? All right. So is it wrong to defend yourself? No, it's not wrong to defend yourself as long as you have a defense that's right and true. Okay. Hey, um, I want to encourage you to check out heavensfamily.org. That's the word heaven, the letter S, the word family.org. That's the ministry that I'm so blessed to direct, and we're working in about 40 countries serving the, the least of these, which is something every Christian ought to be involved in. So check out heavensfamily.org, okay? Till next time, God bless you. Mm -hmm.